Previously, I started the work of cleaning up the code and preparing my Discord games bot to be released publicly for everyone to use. And with the progress I've made in this video, the time has finally come to where the bot is publicly available for everyone to use, everyone to add their own Discord servers, and play these games for real. There will be a link down in the description below to where you can click on it and add the bot to your own discords, and the bot will also be listed on top.gg very soon. But first, in order to get to that point, in this video at least, we need to do some things to finalize the public preparations. Overall, we have two main goals. The first is converting the bot entirely to TypeScript. More on why I'm doing that later. The second of which is to add multiplayer support. That way, when you play a game, you can have two people playing against each other for games like Tic-Tac-Toe, Connect 4, and Chess. Before starting these two things though, the first thing I did was some minor code cleanup. The biggest of which was actually adding the line to Tic-Tac-Toe to show the winning score of when someone won. So when you won, it would actually draw a line on the Tic-Tac-Toe board to show the winning three in a row connection, just as a nice visual indicator to one, signify the game has ended, but two, show the actual winning in a real Tic-Tac-Toe fashion because you don't just leave the game board full with a winner and not draw a line through those three winning moves. So that was the first step. Just a nice kind of quality of life improvement before I moved on to the bigger things, which was to start off porting the entire JavaScript code into TypeScript. Now the reason why I ended up deciding to port the entire code based to TypeScript wasn't because I am some TypeScript fan or I think TypeScript is the best thing in the world. It really came down to the fact that I am an object oriented developer. I work mainly in Java, C Sharp, and languages like that. And to me, object orientation inheritance is a very big part of what I do. And when it came to, came to making these games, I reused a lot of each game within each other. So core concepts of Snake, Hangman, and Chess are all very much shared between the games, especially the embeds and the way the games run and operate. Now if this was done in Java, I would simply just have a base game class to which all of the games themselves inherited. That would make my life easier because I could just add the base code to that base class. The classes inherit it and I can just change very minimal things, but with the JavaScript that we have here, there is no inheritance, so I can't really make that base class, and thus making one small change ended up being making six small changes to each of the games, which just became very, very annoying, and when it came time to doing multiplayer, required me to do those six pretty decent changes to each game, it was just way too tedious, and I'm like, alright, screw it, time has come. Let's just port this entire code to TypeScript and make my life easier when we add multiplayer support. So that is why I've decided to rewrite this in TypeScript and that is why you see the background, the entire process of one by one going through each of the JavaScript files, converting them to TypeScript files, adding that base game class to where each of those games then extend and going through the entire process of doing that. In the end, I very much am happy with the ending results Again, I don't care for TypeScript versus JavaScript, but in this case, TypeScript was definitely the much better decision for myself and just for code organization, code management, and overall made the process of adding multiplayer support, which is coming up next, much easier. So now with the entire code base we in TypeScript, it was time to add multiplayer. Now this was a very easy thing to do within each of individual games because all it really needed to be changed in the games themselves was to add a flag to whether or not the game could be multiplayer or not. Mainly games like Tic-Tac-Toe, Chess, and Connect 4 could be multiplayer, but there's not really such a thing as multiplayer snake. Hangman technically could be multiplayer I guess, but I didn't make a multiplayer just for the fact that it was a little bit weirder to do, so for now it's not multiplayer supportable, but the rest of the games that make sense, again Tic-Tac-Toe, Snake, Hit and chess, I think there's only three, maybe I'm missing one, but those three or four games do have support multiplayer, and all that does is when you type in the game, so exclamation point tic tac toe or connect four, you can then specify a name after that to then challenge that person to play the game against you. So that what that meant for code was to simply add a way to provide that second player to each of the games to where if the player was null, all that would happen is the AI would take over for that second player's turn, or in the case of Connect 4, this first player acted as both the first and second player so that your players are playing best themselves because I don't have an AI for Connect 4 at the moment. Maybe in the future I'll add that, but who knows. 
But in terms of that, that was all that was needed to be done. Just add a second player. If it's null, use the AI code. If they aren't null, use the other player's code for the reactions. And of course, just tweaking some stuff to one, support both players being there, and two, just make the game flow with two players. The only things that weren't straightforward, however, were the main commands bit, because my games, I limit to only allow one instance of a game to be running at a time, mainly for API rate limit issues. That became a little more tricky because I had to keep track of each instance of games, tie them to both a server and a player to where the player could then end the game correctly, but then only allow one game per server. That did become a little more tricky, and I'm not really going to dive into how that was all done because it's not really applicable to all cases, but it was a little bit tricky, but in the end, it's been done. Multiplayer support has been added. You can now challenge your friends to play against you and select other games. Have fun. So there we have it. The bot is now at a state to where I can release it publicly after some beta testing, which has been occurring between finishing this stream that you're watching and this point now. The bot is I am hopefully deeming ready for public use. Again, there will be a link down in the description below for where to click on it to then add it to your own server. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Um, I know this video is definitely a bit different. There wasn't adding a game in this video specifically, but I still thought it was good to one, update you guys that the bot is not public, but two, just provide you kind of updates on what the code base is like and kind of how it's all liking. Um, I did add a license to the repo now, so it is licensed there correctly. So again, you are feel free to use the code as is listed in the repo. I just ask that you give me credit where it's due. I do like the uh, little made by Turkey Dev uh, author tag on these embeds. I definitely uh, would accept those as credit, but anyways, have at it. Again, link down below for the bots being public. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys on the next video. If there's any other games you'd like to see me maybe add in the future for these, Feel free to let me know in the description below, but that is all for me. Thank you for watching. Peace out.